All right, guys. So I'm gonna wait it out about five seconds, let everybody get into the call. Uh, I got a ton of questions from people on Instagram. So I'm gonna go through down the line of these and anybody that does wanna ask questions too, ask them in the comment section to the right. Uh, you're right, my right. Uh, I'll go down the line, I'll answer everything you guys want me to. Uh, I'll just give it about five seconds and I'll let people just join the group. In the meantime, I'm gonna get my, my notes together. make sure I got everything I need. Let's see. But cut out the beginning that's looked from the video up. Let's see, community. All right. Okay, sick. All right. Let's answer great questions. All right, guys. Just letting everybody funnel into the group right now, and then I'll start answering questions. So anybody wants to ask anything, uh, just throw down a comment. Hey, how's it going, guys? Okay, sweet. All right, and I have a ton of Instagram questions right here. Um, if, if you guys are wanting to follow follow my Instagram, it's denton.fisher. Uh, it's, uh, it's an open account, go check it out. I oftentimes will ask questions such as this. So follow my Instagram if you guys want to. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna answer the Instagram questions that I posted yesterday first. So for a lot of you guys that asked the questions, I'm gonna go down the line. All right, so First things first. Hey guys, how's it going? First things first, um, early, how do I not identify with my batting average when I first start off with approaching girls? Now, when it comes to this, you have to understand that for the most part, when it comes down to attracting women, women are extremely picky and you're just, you're just starting off in this. Hey Brad, how's it going? Good to see you, man. So a lot of you guys that are coming at this and you're beating yourselves up, you guys think there's some guy out there that is killing it on a level that you're not. And that guy is such a rare entity. The majority of guys, the 99% of guys, 95% of guys are just utterly suffering. They're doing so terribly with women. And then you're over here thinking that you're the only person feeling this because every other guy is lying about this. Here's the truth. Most guys, especially young guys, are floundering in terms of women. It, it takes a while to build up that, that resolute energy that girls like to be drawn to that they that that concrete foundation that women love and when you're younger you just don't have it so it, you feel maybe ugly you feel like women don't like you i'll put it this way girls when if i ever approach a girl and she doesn't like me there's so many reasons why a girl will reject a guy and the majority of them are actually not even your fault if i know that i had a proper approach i know that she was just mistaken i know that it was more her fault than it was my fault you can't, you can't mitigate for every interaction. Girls are supposed to be picky. The girls most of the time will choose guys from a social circle. So if you're going to approach to attract a girl, you have to be Kangas gone. You have to be Michael Jackson. You have to be Michael Jordan. You, you have to be like this, just this, this ethereal presence in a way. Like you just have to be so beyond any of the guys in her social circle because those guys have all the comfort built. They have all the pre-selection built. They have the leadership roles. They're safe options. Girls oftentimes go to safe options. You're not. So if you're going to win a girl over, you have to be incredible. So batting average, when it comes down to it, when you really look at the batting average, to be honest, I turn that stuff off, especially when I'm warming up. It, it just doesn't help out. Sometimes you're going to approach a girl and she's just in a bad mood. Are you going to like beat yourself up and then cause all the other, other interactions after that one to cause you to go in a downward spiral so that all the girls hate you? No, it, it's a fluke. Flukes happen. Michael Jordan misses shots every so often. He doesn't make 100% of his shots. So in the same way, sometimes you just miss and it's okay. It's not your fault. All right, next one. How do I express myself if I'm afraid to express who I am? Uh, little by little, little by little, action feeds ego. Firstly, under, firstly, figure out who you are, understand what you are. And if you understand yourself, now you can more readily express it. I, for me, I slowly did like a lot of, I took so many notes over a period of time that I, I developed a really good sense of who I am and what I represent. And I just practiced it over time, just a little step at a time. It's called exposure therapy, if you guys are curious, just little increments. So if maybe you like video games, Maybe you're starting to get a little more social, a little more outgoing, and you're starting to feel a little more confident. As you feel more confident, start expressing that stuff little by little. Now, if you are afraid, 
momentum. Momentum, you're just not approaching enough. You haven't been out long enough. For me, usually six months to a year is when I start feeling really resolute in my energy. If you haven't been going out consistently for that period of time and keeping yourself social, it's not going to happen. Now, how do I work on verbals? Again, going out, going out and approaching a lot. Um, over a period of time, if you just, man, this lamp I got over the top of me for the lighting, mm, so hot. So <laughs> when it comes out of working on verbals, one, you can start recording yourself. Two, drop the bar for what you can say is cool. So a lot of you guys, you guys are freezing up on what to say because you think what you have to say isn't good enough. Just fuck that for now. Just throw shit at the wall. Just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Now, as time goes on, you'll say something maybe three times. You're like, oh, that didn't go that great. Then you say something really well one time. You're like, that went really well. Okay, cool. I'm going to keep saying it. Then you say it again and again and again. And the line is just, it's amazing. It puts you in a good mood, makes a girl laugh. And it's like, it's an easy button you can push at any time. And lastly, for verbals, a lot of it has to come down to the fact that you don't think that you're high status enough to to draw the girl to you. You think that, so the reason you, you're running out things to say is because you think in comparison to the girl you're talking to that you're lower status. So you're trying to win her over. You're, you're trying to play, you're trying to play the safe game. Safe game doesn't get hot girls. All right. To be charismatic, you have to risk being offensive and you're not willing to risk being offensive because you think she's on a pedestal. You're putting her above you. Now, actually there was one more thing I wanted to bring up with this in terms of verbals. There's something I do a lot. Hmm. Eh. One piece at a time, just piecemeal it. So if your problem is maybe your conversations are boring, maybe it's because you're speaking in a very monotone voice. If that's the case, then start varying your tone. And don't just do it when you're out gaming. Vary your tone when you're with your family, when you're with your when you're with your brother, when you're with your boss, when you're with your friend, when you're with your best friends, don't just do this when you're out gaming. Like I'm putting on the front now. No, become this person, become the guy that is attractive. If you have to turn all this stuff on, how hard is that to suddenly become this charismatic guy when you've been this really shy, meek, mild individual all day? Now I got to turn it on. It's, it's just not going to happen. So you got to practice this daily. Oh, and for everybody in the comments, I'm going to go start going down that here pretty soon. I have a ton of comments from people from Instagram. So everybody that's, that's on my Instagram, Thank you for the questions. Um, yeah, I'll continue this. So now the next one is a little bit more specific. So I pulled a girl after six hours. She loves me, uh, but she wasn't ready for sex. So what's the optimal strategy for a day two? Now, <laughs> firstly, you have to understand why she wasn't ready for sex. Now, the reason she's actually re wasn't ready for sex because she wants to, you to take her seriously, which probably means that you gave off a vibe, like you might judge her for that. So now that you give off a vibe, like you might judge her for that. Now she's going to be like, oh, I really like this guy. He's going to judge me if I have sex on my first date. I want him to take me seriously. So what you need to do is make her feel a little more special. Make her feel like she's winning you over. And also secondly, in terms of sexual energy, don't push too fast, too hard for the sex for that for sex to happen because it will happen. As especially as, as you relax off it, because if you're very pressury, the girl's gonna get resistant. The girl's gonna resist that because she's not she's she's gonna get an ego about it, and she's also if you you're like come on, come on, come on. The girl's gonna be like no, 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 and it's gonna pull. The way that you want to instead maybe seduce a girl is through eye contact, pauses, cocky energy. Along with just very, make sure you're, you're coming across authentic. So for a lot of you guys that don't know how you sound when you're talking to a girl, record yourselves. This sounds a little bit weird to be honest by like mainstream status, uh, by mainstream um, rules. But for me, recording myself and hearing when I'm messing up and how I'm messing up helps out so much in regards to me improving with my, again, verbal skills, becoming more attractive to girls. So it's, it's massively helpful. So when I'm trying to, when I'm talking to a girl, when you're going on the second date with this girl, don't think about it as the end goal is get sex, get sex, get sex. No, think about it like this. I'm hanging out with a good friend, a girl that I like, who I'm acting as a best friend with, but with sexual intent. And now you, how do you do that? So right now I'm talking to you guys as I would a friend, but then if you switch it up a little bit and you start adding more of the cocky vibes, the slow language movements, it comes across a little more sexual. 
that comes across more hmm, kind of like a, just just attractive. If, if you use this kind of energy, the second date will go pretty well. In regards to like where you're going to sleep, where you're going to take her to, uh, I would actually switch it up rather than your place, though she will be more comfortable at your spot. Take her on something that where you guys are active, where you guys are physical, maybe play pool, maybe take her to go play uh, basketball. Like if she wants to do something like that, something that's physical that you can, that where you're not sitting across from her or you're in some scenario where you have to be awkward and in your head, put it somewhere you're going to be physical with her. That'll help out a lot. Um, defending, defending against guys that are being aggressive. So AMOGs. So AMOG for a lot of you guys don't know, it's, he's, what he's saying is alpha male group. So if a guy's ever like that, for the most part, have like a standard for how you're going to be treated. One, two, I mean, don't, if a guy's going to be like that with you, if, if the guy is friends with the, with the rest of the people, maybe give him a subtle, like, okay, quit being weird look, and then just ignore him the rest of the time. Unless he's, and then what's going to happen is he's going to start chasing you for your attention. Just block him out, just block him out. And I, the way I do it is, is usually I'll see the guys being a weirdo with the girls that I'm talking to. But if the guy's a random and he's trying to take a girl off me, let's say, I will actually, so with, with this the person that cares the least always wins. So I kind of played a little bit in my head a little bit. So every time a guy walks up and the girl starts entertaining him, then now I'm competing. I tell myself, oh, because she is so quick to just jump off me, then I don't really want her, but I'm going to do this for the game, which is, is, is more just me mind fucking myself. It's not a real, I don't actually believe this, but I'm kind of just making myself lose so I can let go of the outcome. And now what I'll do is I'll start pushing the girl onto the guy in a playful way. Like, yeah, no, dude, I, I'm sorry. Look, I know that I was flirting with you originally, but he's sexy as fuck. You got to go with him. He's so tall. Look how tall he is. He's got a strong, bro. You have a strong jawline. You see that jawline? You got to go with that. There's no way. And if the guy's being a little bit more douchey, I'll turn up the douche factor on my side too, just to match him. But for the most part, it's it's more about who cares the least. So what I'm doing is I'm playfully pushing him off. And, and an even better way of doing this too is actually push her onto him with things that you know don't actually make him attractive, but will bait him to actually chase. So you can actually be like, yeah, look, he's definitely rich. Bro, how much does your watch cost? Yeah, 5000 5000 He has a $5,000 watch. Look at me. I'm broke. Your dad will definitely not like a guy like me. You need to go with him. Now the guy's going to be like, yeah, it's $5,000. And that usually will make him start qualifying, which makes him the lowest, lowest status guy. All right. Now, where do, I, where do I see myself in 10 years? Doing the same thing, honestly. I'm, I'm building my, my business. I'm, I'm working on a lot of products. I'm working on the website. I'm starting to travel more. I'm starting to do more touring. Uh, I'm going to start writing books around 35. I, I'm, I'm currently writing a lot of structures for different books. I probably have a dozen or two different books that I've been thinking about writing. So I'll probably be start putting out books by that point because I, I love writing. It's just one of my things. Uh, I'm also looking at a couple ideas for some interesting, well, you, you guys will see it. it it's, it's, over the course of the next 10 years, I'm, I'm, I'm planning some interesting stuff. So, which actually takes me to the next point. So somebody asked, is the course coming? Yes, the course is coming. Is I put it on a ClickFunnels originally, and I had a guy that was helping me out with it, one of my friends, but he ended up having a kid and it, it became like a little bit of a, a hard time communicating with each other. So I'm actually switching the program over to Kajabi, over to another platform. And I'm, I'm, I'm making it and I'm putting it back up. All the videos are already made. I just need to put it up in a cohesive way so that it flows really well. So I'm working on that right now. I'm trying to get back up. Now, how do you flip a cold girl? How do you flip a girl that is not into you originally? Uh, so I call this mental gymnastics. So if a girl's cold with me off the bat, it's not gonna help for you to actually keep chasing and chasing and chasing for the outcome. Because what happens is that as you chase and you want the outcome, it's actually gonna chase the girl away. The more that you care about the outcome, the more she's not gonna be interested in you. So I, I do it like this. So the second that she's not interested, I tell myself, all right, look, no matter what I do, this set's not going to go well. It's not going to go great. So why don't I just give up? I'm just going to give up and I'm just going to self-amuse. Now, what happens is because I gave up and because now I'm self-amusing, I, I also, if the girl's being aggressive with how, how, how she's stonewalling me, I'll match her aggression for maybe the first sentence or two until she cracks but I'll start self-amusing in a very loud and obnoxious way. And I'll match her 
her energy back at me. Now, what will usually happen is that, is that she will fold and she'll start liking me. This is, it's, it's the best strategy I found. Uh, it's, it's got to play a little bit more mental games with yourself to kind of get yourself in this headspace. But it's usually what I start doing. I, I turn it up a little bit. It's, it's the best way to flip these kind of sets. Now, if the girl's just straight, like, fuck you, get away, fuck, don't, just get away. That's, that's not worth your time, just get away. But if the girl's just stone cold, not giving you much, and you feel like you can, you can win this one over and you're in a good headspace, try. You'd be really surprised how often these ones will actually work out in your favor. Yeah. All right, now, how to overcome success barriers. Uh, time and visualization. Visualization is one of the best things that I use. So even with my, like, so actually, if you guys look at my community tab, I have literally a collage of like different girls that I'd wanted that I would be interested in dating, that I would be interested in going after. And I, and I, when I see it, I visualize myself dating them, how it'd be so easy and so effortless and how they would just be melting into my arms. And I, I imagine it in detail. In the same way, if it's about money, visualize yourself with what, what would you do with a million bucks? What would it be like to make 10,000 in a day, 20,000 a day? How much, how crazy would that feel? Now, there's some guy out there that's actually living that reality. And by you kind of really getting into that headspace, like this is what it is, it makes it a lot easier. Now, it's also baby steps and teach yourself over time, like I'm going to take the proper action to get to that place. And you keep getting little wins, little wins, little wins. Like if you're if you're making, I don't know, 7,000 a month, like it's, it's you're not gonna, there's no way you're gonna be able to visualize making 100,000 a month. You can maybe make, like maybe now you can visualize making 20,000. Hey, that's like in your in your bar. But don't like over jump it. Like you're gonna be making little wins, little wins, little wins, little wins, little wins. Don't you can just could have a stretch goal and be like, that's my stretch goal. But when, when you're trying to like when you're trying to visualize and you're trying to imagine this this far off reality, it, like a little bit at a time is what's gonna matter because your brain's you're you're dragging your ego, your narrative. Your narrative is gonna fight. Your nerve is not gonna be on your side on this because your narrative is like in the past, this has not been the case. You're lying to me. I need facts, I need facts and proof. Like you're 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 just giving me words and images. This is not the truth. So little wins, little wins, little wins. The visualization also will help you gain a target and help develop the right mindsets to get there, which is all mindsets. It's all narrative. Like you, you it will stop you from self-sabotaging, which is the biggest problem. Every guy self-sabotages. All right, let's get to the next point. Mindsets for a solo game. The way that I always view it is that, so the reason that people don't like solo game to begin with is because solo game is... It's difficult to approach a girl, like a group of girls, and say, you, you're sexy, you're my type, what's your name? And not have the weight of everybody's judgment on you and to, to keep resolute in your own friend that I'm awesome, this is going to go well. That I'm, I'm so fucking awesome as I'm talking to these girls. These girls are all going to melt in my arms. They're all going to love me after about five to ten minutes of this because I'm awesome. Now, maybe like one or two girls looking at you like, oh no, what's this weirdo or apprehensive? Like this better go well. Well, for a lot of you guys that, that are not used to going out solo or don't have that resolute frame yet because you haven't been out long enough or you guys haven't been you know throttled throughout life or you guys haven't gone through a lot of adversity yet. It's, it's a very terrifying thing to have like a group of people look at you and be like, what a weirdo. But after a while, I'll say this, it's both the good and the bad that ultimately makes you have a strong frame that, that makes you good at something like solo game. So as you go out, look at it this way. You are doing this because it's harder to go out solo. You're doing this because it makes you even more, it gives you an even stronger frame. Because if you went out with your friends every time, now they become a crutch. Anytime you have a crutch, it's it's going to prevent you from going through those, those really beautiful growth curves. If you're like, if you're leaning, if you're like that vine that climbs the wall and the wall is taken away and you collapse, like that's the worst thing. It's the reason why a lot of guys that, that get into this industry, they preach things such as not getting attached to a look, alcohol, to drugs, to a certain type of personality or persona, because it makes you rigid. And then the second you become rigid, you, you can be like, just be decimated. So in the same way, by going out by yourself every day, you develop this like deep self-confidence, this deep confidence in yourself. For me personally, like because I go out so much and oftentimes I do go out by myself and I like going out by myself, it makes it to where when somebody tells me something isn't true, it's a lot tougher 
for them to convince me of the case if I'm truly believing that this that they're wrong because I, I I've just developed so much belief in myself just through the course of doing this over the course of years of doing this for me of like pushing myself through very hard struggles like I've seen it time and time again where I'm right because I keep throwing myself into the face of it so in the same way a lot of you guys solo game is a beautiful thing to do go out by yourself terrifying right but what's the, what does it matter like you guys are probably worried about what the girl's gonna think of you so like if you think it's weird it's weird if you think it's okay it's okay it's fine it, it's it's your viewing of it is going to dictate how other people view it oh where's your friends now nah, i came up by myself tonight my friends are too much of a pussy like just it's not that big a deal i'm still fucking awesome either way with or without friends so all right how do you compete for a girl? Oh, this that's actually one we just talked about. Uh, more physicality, good or bad? So this guy asked is, as you get better, do you is getting more physical, good or bad? Um, physicality is good, as long as it's socially intelligent. I don't think it's a good or, like, as you get better or something like that. Like, you can, on occasion, see, this one's the one that's going to get me in trouble, actually. I can't say certain things on YouTube anymore. All right, well, I'll put it this way. Be empathetic, be caring, try it out. Don't don't be completely ignorant of the girl's reality and subjective reality. Try it out. If the girl's like freezing up or freaking out, back off, be socially aware. All I'm gonna say, all right? And now the next one, does humor matter? Yes. Okay, I'll get into more details on that. Humor is an indication that you believe in your status in the tribe. Only people that believe in themselves are, or believe in their status are, are creative enough to actually joke and tease. So humor is almost like the same way with humans, the way that the peacock has the feathers, the, the same way the peacock has the feathers, you're so adept and so loose that now you can joke and tease and mess with people. You say, hey, quit, be, quit, being, hey, quit being a dumbass. Stop that. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. No, shut up. Like, you're just like, you're just more free flowing and just kind of teasing. It's an indication that you believe in your status in the tribe. It's the peacock feathers for humans. So yeah, humor is pretty important. All right. Oh, and, and uh, I'll get into the comments here in a second. Once I finish up on this last question, uh, how to get girls to qualify. Uh, you get girls to qualify by being a vacuum of qualification yourself, by not qualifying whatsoever, by not trying to convince the girl you are something, by not using excess words that are unnecessary by putting your comfort first over the girl's comfort by saying jokes that might offend her, but you think are funny, still socially aware, obviously, you know, it's a balance by being okay with silence, obviously not at first, but as time goes on and she invests, yes, by not laughing at your jokes, not laughing at your jokes. I do like laughing and laughing at your jokes isn't even that terrible thing, to be honest. It's actually not bad, especially if your laughter is authentic, but holding back on laughter will actually make more of a vacuum effect. And it'll make her be like, whoa, was he teasing me? Was he joking? It's a push pull. So in the same way, all these things, they're, they're all what I call a vacuum of qualification. I'm not qualifying. I'm not trying to convince you of something. I'm not trying to warp your reality, at least seemingly, at least seemingly, at least obviously, at least with all the ways that you can, you can imagine. But by, by being such a vacuum qualification, the person that cares the most will always qualify. So if you care the least, she's going to qualify. Even if it's like a 1% difference, she's going to qualify a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more until it's a snowball effect. So it's called a vacuum of qualification. Now let's get into the comments over here. So dude, I've approached on every week as I live with my parents. Okay, so I'm guessing you're saying, let me actually, here, let me make this a bigger page so I can see what you guys are saying. Dude, I have approached once every week as I live with my parents. That's not bad, dude, you're still young. That's fine. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> unless you're gonna make this your life's passion, that's fine, man. You're, if you're still living with your parents um, or if you're doing this for like maybe financial reasons, either way, I mean, are your parents going to kick you out if you go, if you're more aggressive about it? I, I don't, as long as they're like somewhat open-minded parents, I don't think they're going to mind too much that you're, you as a guy are interested in girls. That just makes sense. Let me go. What's up, man? Story maxing, fashion maxing before a learning game. Okay. No, <laughs> no, 
you should go out and game first. You're going to be like, you're, I mean, if it makes you more confident, go for it, but you should, you should go out and approach. Like I get it. But why can't you do both at the same time? You're, you're, you're doing all this stuff because you think it's going to help your, your approach. The only way it's going to help your approach is if it makes you feel more confident. I mean, yes, it will help, help to a certain extent, but the, the bigger factor is how you feel about yourself. And that's only going to change by you going out and taking a lot of notes, quality and quantity of effort, going on approaching and then writing field reports, thinking things through, how could I've done better? Like if you, if you actually look at my, my YouTube videos, for example, if you go back and back and back, go all the way to the beginning of my videos, you can actually watch them as they progressively get better and better and better. Even my speaking gets better and better and better. It's because I'm constantly taking notes. I'm constantly putting myself out there. If, if I was only over here working on my fashion, I never worked on my, my verbal speaking. I don't think you guys would watch my channel. You guys would be like, this guy's a dumbass. To be fair, you guys would be like, this guy's never improved. How am I going to like, how am I going to trust this guy? I'd act like, like I was still like 16 years old. I'd still act insecure. Like I did when I first started this YouTube channel. So now I would definitely get out there, man, for sure. Uh, if that stuff's going to make you more confident, definitely do it. But there's, there's, there's actually even a YouTube video that I have of me when I was fat, picking up a really attractive uh, Brazilian girl. If you want to look it up, look up the video that says, uh, do looks matter. It's something like this. One of my looks matter video in the very end of the video, there's a clip of me picking up this, this girl. And I, in the video, I actually slow it down. I circle my belly. I had this big ass, I looked pregnant. I was like, I was, I had a big belly and she was all over me, her and her sister. They, they love the crap out of me. Uh, Last week, I approached 11 women. Then this week, I approached only four, and my anxiety skyrocketed in another venue. Uh, okay, think about it like this. So when you go out, your 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 knee-jerk reaction is to start feeling anxiety. So it's, it's like when you, you have the mouse, and let's say every time you ring the bell, you feed it cheese. Ding, 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 ding. Here comes the rat. Eat the cheese. Now, maybe every time... The rat does something, you give it a shock. Well, this is what's happening with you. You're associating this anxiety with going out. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a version of you that goes out and has a lot of fun, has no anxiety. So what I would do is, is I would start actually, every, after every time going out, I would visualize the same sets that you felt super anxious in. And instead, I imagined how I'd speak in a calm way, how I'd feel more relaxed, how you, you got to draw this mental bridge because there's a different version of you that you don't, that you're not, that you don't have like a me mental model for yet. And by doing this, by doing this mental model, it'll help you to more move into his shoes. So for you, after every time going out, imagine those sets that those, those interactions with those girls that made you really anxious. And then just imagine being really calm, really relaxed. It will, it will help out a lot. I, I used to do this all the time and I still do this on occasion. I'll actually do this with certain, I'll, I'll even do this with, um, maybe if I gave a speech, I'll imagine how I walk onto the stage, you know, how I'm very loose, how I'm very relaxed, how I'm joking, how I'm teasing, how my tone is really good, how I'm using my pauses, how I'm being very authentic and relaxed and how I'm just free flowing and just, you know, a leader. So I, I visualize, imagine how, like I'll even look at the crowd, imagine how the crowd's enjoying my, my speech and how everybody's very engaged. So in the same way, just visualizing, visualizing, visualizing. There's a, there's a reason why so many professionals speak about this all the time. And, it, and it's, it's hard for people who are very, very present, who aren't very visual to, to understand the power of this. But for a lot of you visual learners, a lot of you guys who are very mental and you guys are very good at making mental models, you guys like you guys probably understand the power of this. So for those of you who don't, who's, who this sounds woo-woo for, just know it's because you're very present. And if you were to work on this, it would massively help out. Hell yeah, I'm here. What's up, chat? What's up, man? And we got Bradicus in the group chat too, by the way. So if you guys want to, say hi to Bradicus. Uh, who are some of your business mentors? Um, Tyler's helped me out a lot. Avery actually helps me out a lot. Uh, my mom, actually. My mom uh, went from being broke when I was a kid to making a big business by the time I was in my late teens. And she's a badass bitch. So she's helped me out a lot over the years with my business. My brother also, he is 27. He, if he's not a millionaire yet, he's going to be. He helps me out a lot too. He's he's a very smart guy. Um, Brad Raven. <laughs> Let's see. Do you ever implement online gamer note? Uh yeah, definitely. If you guys aren't implementing it or working on it, definitely do it. My next video is actually gonna be 
a three-part series on working on your online game. So look forward to that. I am going to post that up probably tomorrow, the next day. I just need to make a thumbnail for it and make some uh, SEO terms for it. I'm also going to do some animations along with it. So that's going to take me a little bit unless I get somebody to help me out with it. Uh, may I know why my anxiety skyrocketed? Is it maybe because I changed venues? No, it's maybe. Yeah, actually, maybe. You, you just feel uncomfortable in a new in a new area. But there's also your mindsets around it. You're, 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 identify the mindset that's making you anxious. There's a mindset or a belief that's making you anxious. And then if you switch it or, or change it, it's going to help out. So here, for example, uh, there was a time when I would get grumpy and... I would take it out on people or let's say like, let's say somebody was holding the door open for me and I was a good distance away, like maybe 15 feet. And I'm like, God damn it. Now I got to walk faster. So I'll walk faster. So I get through the door and I'm like, I get mad at the guy, give the guy maybe an angry look, like an annoyed look. Well, why am I throwing negative energy at somebody for helping me out? Why am I throwing negative energy at somebody for being nice or caring about a complete stranger to hold the door open from, even if he's doing it maybe as in a supplicating way, it's still nice. So the cool thing is, or like if he's doing a supplicating ways, he's looking at me as the leader, even better. I, I'm the leader. So now instead of me being annoyed, it's like, there's one of my followers. What's up, man? Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Now it's more in a positive way. So now instead of me experiencing a negative, bad emotion, now I'm feeling, now I'm feeling a positive emotion. So if, if you can identify the feeling that caused you to feel anxious in that venue, you'll be able to fix it and change the mindset. And then you won't have that problem anymore. How common are... Day games, same day lays. Um, more common than you think. Uh, I'll put it that way. It's 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 a lot easier. It's it's mainly with a lot of guys. It's more of like a success barrier. I know a lot of guys who pull all the time for day. Um, I don't really go out too much in the day anymore because I run a business that's predicated on going to nightclubs uh, with guys. So I'm actually decently nocturnal now, which is also explains my pale <laughs> presence, my ghastly appearance. Uh, you answered my question first. Denton, you're the best. Hey, no worries, man. Sage, just watch this guy, bro. <laughs> hey, Denton, this is Poe. Ah, shit, man. What's up, bro? Last time I access, even looking back at that time frame, I have improved dramatically, especially comparing myself during the boot camp. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. So he's one of the guys that he's, man, you've been evolving so fast, bro. I'm really excited to see how you turn out next. Uh, text me next time you come to Vegas. Let me know. Uh Answer the other questions first. My questions are a bit specific, lol. <laughs> lol, I love this. Yeah, it's a fucking journey. Quiet guys, introverts, and shy feel like major. Okay, so quiet guys, introverts, and shy. I feel like a majority of audience are hard case newbies. No, actually, I've met a lot of the guys in these. A lot of the guys in our in the group chats are oftentimes a lot of very high quality. So it's you do get the occasional very hard case newbie, but for the most part, a lot of the guys that are in these uh Group chats are, that are watching my channel are pretty high quality guys. I met a lot of you guys in person. A lot of you guys are actually really well off. A lot of you guys are way better off than I am when it comes to other means outside of women. Like the, a lot of the audience members in that watch me are pretty fucking cool ass guys. And I, I feel really blessed that I have you guys watching my stuff and helping me out. It's it's uh, it's, it's way better than some other people's audiences. I've seen some dark audiences in the past. And I'm glad that I'm not uh, one of those people. I'm glad that I draw people such as yourselves to me. So I just got rejected, Denton. <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't get rejected. Reframe it. Talking to you, chat. I'm your star. <laughs> Moon blinked a little into the silence. I used to be hard case newbie. I, it took a full year to get to where I am now. And I feel like a noob had to take multiple boot camps. Lol. <laughs> no, no. Everybody has to like improve. So Everybody that I know who's successful, they, they pay for people that help them out in the area. So you can only be good at one or two things, but what do you do is you find other people that are really good in the, in the area that you want to be good in and then you hire them. What I want to do, I want to eat healthier. I'm not, I'm not eating as healthy as I could. So get a nutritionist, get a personal trainer, get a vocal coach, get the things that you don't have the time to work on that with people that are very good coaches, Find the coaches, experiment around a little bit, find the people in the areas that you want to improve in. And then just the, the one or two or three things that you were really fucking good at, hammer those into the ground, become really good at those. And then use the resources from that either, you know, in form of uh, exchange of services or money or wealth 
to buy more coaching from other people. I do it all the time. Everybody, everybody at any level gets coaching. They get coaching for different and various reasons. All the guys that I've ever known who are successful in business, they all have business mentors. Everybody has business mentors. They're, I'm pretty much sure all my, almost all my rich to well-off friends all have currently are paying at least one business mentor currently. So it, it's a very, whenever, whenever you want to look and want to find the fundamentals in anything, you, you want to look to what everybody that has what you have is doing. And what are the, what's the common correlations? One of the common correlations is getting coaching. It's, it's, it's a, it's a necessity to getting good at what you want to do. You find the people, you, you find the people that can help you take a shortcut. So you don't have to spend years upon years trying to get good at something. Don't waste your time. Dude, my anxiety last week was low. Then why this week is so high? Did I change? <laughs> it's look, look at the mindsets. I promise you look at the mindsets, like delve into those. Would love to see a hardcore POA podcast network start up. I think discussing these things in front of an audience would be next level. I think so too. Uh, we, we actually were doing a podcast for a second called the Las Vegas Lost Boys. We might start doing it again. We're feeling it out. Or I might just do it myself. I'm, I'm starting to do a lot more blogging. So if you guys want me to do something like that, just let me know. Uh, where are you, Black Pilled Incel, that gave you the testimony? No, no, I wasn't. Uh, three, three gold stars. Okay. I took one boot camp to help me get started with my cold approaching, but I don't want, want to only progress through coaching. Yeah, well, it's quality and quantity of effort. So go out consistently and then write down a lot of notes. Take a lot of notes and then try to think through is how could, if this was Groundhog Day and I could relive the scenario over again, what could I have possibly done differently? How could I have thought differently, moved differently, spoke differently in a way that would have made the interaction go the direction that I wanted it to go? How could I made the girl like me when the girl was disgusted? Why was she disgusted? What could I have done differently so that instead of disgusted, she was attracted? So you, you think things through. If you're just blindly going out every day, you're just ingraining bad habits, you're going to, which I did. By the way, the reason I'm saying this is because I did this. My tone was so fucked for so long, and it took me so long to undo this because I went out so many approaches, so many approaches, doing the same thing over and over. And eventually, I had to break the habit of this tens of thousands of approaches. And you know how hard that is? Just, just think through things through critically, take a lot of notes and notice and identify your sticking points and notice when they arise. It'll make it a lot easier. And also to record yourself. Recording yourself helps out a lot too. If you can hear the way you're speaking, sometimes you have like a version of yourself and this is how I must be sounding. But then you actually start listening you're like, oh, I can improve in so many different ways. Okay, fair. Oh, I thought I was talking fast. Actually, I had a really good canter. Cool. Actually, I sounded way cooler than I, than I thought I was. I thought I was way more nervous. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can be a little more confident in that area. So listening to yourself helps out a lot. Uh, if I could go back, I would totally punch myself in the face. It's been a long journey. <laughs> Fair. Uh, San Diego. What's up, man? Love San Diego. I love to take Austin Summers immersion, but 3K would be difference between getting a nice slick or moving out of the crib. Um, hey, do whatever you think is right, man. Whatever is going to be a linchpin for you. Uh, fucking journey first. Imagine talking to old ladies, low wind, then fucking like the fat chicks, et cetera. No, <laughs> true, but I'm sprinting uh, because it looks psycho AF. What makes you, uh, how old are you, Radio Raven? Uh, opposite uh, issue, doing game solo. Um, don't get it, to be honest. What's wrong with visualize, to be honest? Uh, a lot of guys who are very present. So there's two funk, there's two P, there's a, there's a person that, that hates visualization and it's because of the way that his brain or the way he processes information. So he's very one present. So he's not very visual. He's very much just here all the time. He's just like, he's very present. And he also has a harder judging function. But if you have a high perceiving function and you're also an uh, intuitive individual, you're very good at visualizing, which is what I am. I, I'm very high in perceiving and very high in uh, intuition. I'm actually not, I, I, it makes me very ADHD though I will, I will say it makes me a lot less focused. So that's something I have to work on. But uh, with guys that are like that, they're a high in judging function, which means that they, they hate ambiguity. And then they are also very present. They don't always, they're not always in their head thinking about things. They're just always here. Those guys just don't, they don't understand this. They, they have a harder time accessing that visual side of themselves. It's just, it's just a part of their, this is their, the way their brain functions that they have a hard time with. Uh <laughs> Did I just scroll down way too far? Oh my God, you guys are asking so many questions. 
All right, here, let me. Oh, damn, you guys are going at it, though. Nice. Here, I'll try to get through as much as I can. Once I hit the hour mark, I'll probably quit because I still got to go out and game with AG. But I'll try to get through as much of this as I can. You guys are, man, these are good questions, though. Oh, dang. Okay, all right. <laughs> Give me five seconds, guys, okay? Let me find a good question. Thank you, Denton. You changed my life. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Thanks, Justin. Um, when do we do a cold approach here? We legit risk dying, but PUA life. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, best place to game in NYC. Uh, Soho. Uh, it's important to get the fat friend on your side always. No, it's not always. So sometimes, so is it always important to get the fat friend on your side? No. If it's a narcissistic codependent relationship, no. She's irrelevant. You can ignore her completely. Her friend doesn't even view her as a person, so you can ignore her. But you got to identify that it's a codependent narcissistic relationship. And if you can identify that it's that, like a hardcore one, you can ignore the fat friend. And she's she'll, she's basically like a puppy dog to her friend. Like she's she's an object. But then again, that kind of girl is the kind of girl you want to be careful about because those girls build these weird warped realities in their head. And they're the ones that are most likely to do and say crazy shit. Um, you'll make it. Is it important? Uh, uh, you're in my gold star. What's your opinion on Julian Transformation Mastery? I think it's dope. Um, I think it's dope. There's there's a lot of other products out there that actually spouse the same exact thing though. So I don't know. Pick your poison. If you want to, if, Jul if Julian's product on that specifically really speaks to you, go for it. <laughs> Try to make it out, man. He has a lot of experience. Uh, and if it isn't helpful, put it in on blast so it helps out. I can't afford because of the crazy currency differences. Yeah. Qualified is big. Todd V saying getting girls to qualify in day game sets helps reduce flaky numbers. It does. Uh, but as you change your personality, you become authentically cool. And you also become picky yourself. And you actually start. So you guys should be working to become picky and to get an idea of not, just, not physically, but emotionally and personality wise, what kind of girl you want and habits wise, like what's your model of the perfect girl and develop that. And then you start screening for a little bit. You can even fake screening for it. Or you can make like you, what I'll do sometimes when I'm with a client is I'll trick myself into feeling like the girl won me over where I'm like, eh, kind of, eh, but then like, I'll be like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Oh yeah, that's dope. And then even the, the things that I know are red flags, I'll flip around and be like, oh, that's so dope. She's adventurous. It's, she, it's a red flag, but I'll do that with clients. You just got to make yourself feel like, like you're the prize, not her. If you can feel that way, then she's going to qualify. You're the prize, not the seller. So if you walk into a store to go buy a TV, do you just walk in and buy the first TV? No, you look at the specs. You're like, oh, it's LED. It's um, it's a cathode bulb uh, TV. It's a plasma screen. It's 60 inch, 40 inch. I have a small room. Like find find the girl that matches you that you want. And maybe develop this girl, find that girl, date her. And you're like, oh, actually, I didn't like that about her. Cool. All right, I'm going to add that to the list. And now as you talk to girls, you're like, this is not my type. Now you know really fast. Biggest fashion tip, fix your body, then everything looks amazing on you. True. Basically, now I work uh, nine to five ting and want to start a business, gradually quit nine to five. So it's wrong to already visualize the business succeeding massively with insane. No, no, go for it. Go for it. No, no, definitely go for it. But also like find the little baby steps in between. So what I did was I, I, I where did I want to, where, where do you want to get to? Then where are all the little steps in between? What do you have to know? What do you have to do? Where do you have to be? Who do you have to know? Like all these different things and then make a step-by-step -step all the way there. And then just visualize maybe like five steps ahead, like 10 steps ahead. Don't get like, still visualize the, the end goal. Don't get me wrong. But also too, like understand, like you, it's, it's going to be hard for you to visualize that to be fair, because it's so far beyond your current reality. It's something you don't think you deserve yet. You're like, Oh, you know, it's yeah. Visualize it. But you know, also visualize the, the things like here, because you're still trying to accrue the small wins as you accrue the small wins, you start believing that maybe you're capable of achieving this. So that's the way I like it. Yeah. Definitely do a stretch goal and definitely visualize a stretch goal. It's just also know the steps in between 
Because if you don't know the steps in between or how you're going to like, I want to make a million dollars. How are you going to make a million dollars? Like have, like have a plan. Sorry, this is more of a finest, but I'm trying to understand visualization concept. Okay. No, you're, you're good, man. No worries. Uh, you mentioned going out solo. Could you explain detail on that? Nightclubs, bars, or day game? Um, I call it popular guy game. So what I do is I walk into a club and I immediately, I don't even just approach girls. I approach guys as well. I approach guys that I think are cool and I make alliances. I make friends. And as I make friends, as I keep talking to girls, as I keep making, like, so like, I'll be talking to a girl, like a guy walk by, I'll fist pound him. Like, what's up, bro? Good to see you. I was up and the, the girl's like talking to me and I'm just pounding people as they're walking by. I'm like, what's up, bro? Good to see you. And everybody's excited to see me. Well, it's really good look on you. If everybody like, oh no, I, I came out. No, no, I have no friends. Everybody hates me. What's up, bro? How's it going? Like, it, it looks really boss. So talk to the girls, talk to the guys and the girls that you don't even find attractive, don't flirt with them. Instead, approach to make a friend. Approach them to make a friend, not to necessarily flirt with them. And now you have an alliance with them. It's pre-selection still. It doesn't matter how attractive the girls. It's still pre-selection. You talking to a girl like that, pre-selection. Just, just very. When you first walk into the venue, talk to the very first person you think about talking to immediately. If you don't do that, you're going to start building anti-momentum, but it's going to stop cause you to not approach whatsoever. You're the first first person you see. Mm. All right, how much more time I got? Okay, we're doing okay. There's no way I'm going to get through all these questions though. I'm sorry, guys. This is, you guys are really, I, I mean, I love it. I love that you guys are asking so many questions, but damn. <laughs> uh, love from Portugal. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, Pakistan. <laughs> I could relative bizarre questions. How, how could I get girls who have same strange hobby as me? Like having a tickle fetish, fetish being upfront and authentic and honest about it. A lot of, if a girl likes you too, she'll adopt the same thing and she'll actually want to please you. So then she'll start doing it with you, especially if she really likes you. If a girl really likes you, she's like, he likes that. Cool. I'm into it too. She'll like it just because you're into it because you get really into it. So it's like the same way that like, how do I work with LMR? Get really horny yourself. And when you're really horny, like, like, when you're really horny, that makes for really good sex because what you feel, she feels. If you're really enjoying sex, she's going to really enjoy sex. So in the same way, if you really enjoy the foot fetish, the tickling thing, then you just be very upfront and honest about it. And then maybe not immediately, maybe first let her, you know, simmer up and get to know you. Maybe start dating you first, maybe after like two or three times having sex. But after those two to three times having sex, she's already starting to like you now. She's investing. And now you can bring this up with her and just be really into it. Just be like, you're the man. You, you dictate the frame of what's cool and what's not cool. Why did your part 110? Uh, because, all right, so why did the part one of top 10 pickup artists in the world get taken down? Because, uh, uh, what is his name? Valentino Cohen. He didn't like that. So he's trying to move into business and he didn't like that his face was in there. So he hired some lawyers and they went after YouTube and they took it down and they said that I was violating some ruled that I wasn't. So I brought up with them and apparently the lawyers, I don't know what the lawyers did, but the lawyers said, yeah, you're definitely violating this. And now I can't have the video up anymore. I still have the video. I just, like, I, I knew that he was trying to take it down. So I exported it. So I have it separate, but I can't post it to YouTube anymore because YouTube now says that it's breaking policies, which it's not. It's just Valentino Cohen's a little bit of a prick. I'm sorry. He's, he's a prick. He's a prick. All right. Uh, Reese, just be secure with your fetish. And <laughs> yeah, exactly what he said. Uh, Andy Denton, how can I apply game to marriage in a conservative country? Um, be very on your heels. Don't verbalize you hitting on somebody. Be more, more express the flirt through the eye contact and through the energy. Cause it's a lot harder to tie that stuff down. So if you're in a conservative country, you can give a girl a look and an energy and not verbalize it. And you can get away with it that way. Uh, like think about it like this, if you're in a deposition and people are writing down what you're saying and you're like, yes, judge, I definitely did not kill that person. Like they're not going to get, they're not going to get the subtext. There's going to be like, no judge. I definitely didn't kill that person. That's all they're going to write down. So in the same way, think about it like that. Act as if you're in a deposition. I miss Braddock's channel on YouTube. I, I know we all do. It sucks. He's, he'll, he's coming back though. Uh, thank you, radio. <laughs> now, question about women. Do you, you guys feel that women of some ethnicities tend to give more importance to looks of a man? Uh, they think they do. So do women of certain ethnicities give, tend to give more importance to looks on a man? It, it's more of a cultural thing. So, all right. So 
if you're going to date like a black girl, never bring up race ever, 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 ever bring it up. Act as if it's normal because when you bring it up now, it's now it's in the subtext. Now she's going to be like, is it a fetish? Is it this? Is it that? And she's not going to trust you 100%. Uh, now on the other side of things, there are certain cultures that supposedly care more, but the second that you don't care yourself and you're very resolute in your beliefs that you're awesome, the girl doesn't care anymore. I've had so many times where girls like, I'm just not into white boys and say, except for the, except for the cute charismatic ones. Right. And you know, the girl will just be like, all right, fine. Fuck it. Give me your phone number and we'll end up talking. So it's more of how you believe in yourself. How many matches do you get on Tinder? Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> Uh, why did your part, um, I start having anxiety in stores with securities. Well, it means that you probably need to be a little bit more socially aware. So you're, you're probably acting. So you're probably super nervous, maybe, or you're not nervous at all. And you're, you're a hammer type. If, if it's your nerves, go somewhere else, just go somewhere else for right now. The security will forget about you in, in literally six months to a year. And by that point too, you'll be a lot more charismatic and you won't have that effect on the girls. They won't be weirding them out. So it's just, as you invest time in this, you'll, you'll figure it out and become more charismatic as time goes on. So this might be an issue for now, but go somewhere else. Like in the next six months to a year, come back and they'll completely forget about this entire thing. But in the meantime, try to be more socially aware. If you're making a girl feel uncomfortable, be like, like even if she's being rude, just say, sorry, I didn't mean to freak you out. Have a good day and walk off. And open palms, always a great thing. Like, sorry, let me freak you out. Have a good day. Like, walk off. Uh, how to overcome a sexual dry spell? Um, I will trick myself. So I will actually tell myself I'm doing way better than I am. So let's say, like, I was hanging out with a girl and we got back to my place, but we didn't have sex. I'll trick myself into thinking that I did. I'm like, man, I'm killing it. And, like, over the course of, like, two to three months, maybe, like, I took four girls back in my spot or something like that. And I'm like, maybe none of them liked me. Maybe none of them like turn out into anything, but I'll trick myself into believing that. What will happen is, is that I'll start because I'm tricking myself and thinking I'm doing way better than I am. I, I, I trick myself and thinking I'm not even having a dry spell. And then I'm out of the dry spell. Uh, that which you resist persists. So the more that you're actually trying to overcome the dry spell, if you love the dry spell, you will not be in a dry spell. So love the dry spell for the time being. Love the lesson it's teaching you. Love the, the way it's pushing you. And you won't have a dry spell anymore. Uh, happy to meet you. <laughs> How much do you think confidence plays into game if guys works on themselves physically and try out shit? They <sighs> well, okay. The reason you're asking this is because you're trying to you're trying to justify putting the energy in. Just try it out, man. Look, you you'll be massively surprised. It's a lot more than you currently think. Okay, I'll put it that way. I'm not gonna go into like the the semantics of it but way, 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 way more than you think it will. Okay. Don't talk yourself out of uh, going and trying this out. Okay. And don't, don't talk yourself out of it. Just try it out. Take my word on this. Nice shirt. Thank you, man. If I could wear it properly, I think it'd be even better to be fair. <laughs> Too much chest hair. There's no way he gets laid. <laughs> uh, serious question. I'm on a point of my life where I've been very complacent in my life and I'm broke living with my family. Should I focus on acquiring wealth and then worrying about, yeah, I would actually, yeah. Acquire wealth, make yourself really comfortable and relaxed, then go out and do it. You can still do it in your free time too. Don't get me wrong. Like if you go to the, if you go to target to go buy like, I don't know, eggs or something like you're in target, like see a cute girl, go say hi to her, or even just like do a baby approach. Be like, Hey, how to say this very sexy, but I'm in a big ass rush. If I had more time, I'd definitely talk to you. Have a good day. Walk off. Just that easy. And then it's like a bait approach. You, you didn't waste any time doing that. So there, easy as that. Jesus. The chat bar shot all the way down to the bottom and I lost my place. Uh, there we go. Actually, I think I found it. Um, how to talk to girls in their 20s and my 30s. Do I address or ignore? Use with advantage. Um, girls like older guys. Like you're, you're thinking that it's like a way bigger. I've known guys that are like 15, 60 dating, like 20 year olds. It's not that big a deal, man. It's only a big deal. If you think it's a big deal inner game versus outer game, both essential, both essential. Why you part one of, yeah, yeah. We talked about that already. Please don't go to the RSD route into self-help BS. I've always been talking about this stuff. To be honest, I, I, I just talk about things that are going to get me the outcome 
that me and my people desire and whatever that is, even if it's like this self-help BS, believing yourself and having confidence, I'm sorry, man, does make you better with girls. Having a better, more clean mindset, the actions always feed the, 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 the mindsets feed the, the actions. The self is always coming through. If you believe in yourself, you're going to move and speak differently. You're going to take different actions. You're not going to take so much BS, which anybody that thinks that the whole self-help thing is BS, usually a lot of the guys that think that usually are narcissists or are just very, again, high into judging function or are in this, they, they think that there's like, it, it's because you're having a hard time bridging the gap between the logic and the, the self-help stuff. So there's, there's almost like, I can explain it here, actually here, do this. Tell me which part of self-help to you is BS and I'll explain it concinctly in a way that you can understand why it matters. All right. So here, um, all right. Laughing Fox, tell me one of the, the self-help concepts that you have a hard time with believing and I'll explain it in a way that will, that you can understand. And then from there, you can understand how it benefits your life. Anybody from UK? <laughs> Stoked for EDC game next weekend. Are you going? Uh, no, I'm not going. I got boot camps. Uh, which actually, to be honest, I should have taken the client to the EDC boot camp, maybe. Uh, but also, I see your point. Fill the void bummer for them. Uh, so what am I saying? Most people don't have game because their competence is very low. So if they work on themselves physically first, it would make a big difference. Yeah, true. Yeah, if you, if you need to work on yourself physically to make yourself more confident, go for it. It will help in that way. Just don't think that it's the muscles and the biceps that are going to make the girls like you. Some will, some will, but it, the ones that will are usually, they don't actually like you. They're, they're, they're liking on you because they, you help them present a certain image for themselves. So, so to society, they look a certain way, but that's like the sevens and sixes. It's not like the eights, nines, and tens. The eights, nines, and tens don't really care that much about it because they're already self-validated. They already know they're pretty. So they don't really need so much of that. Dude, I live with my parents and only able to go out once a week. I couldn't go out two, three times a week. Jarvis, any advice? Um, make the time you have count. Focus on the the quality of effort. Focus on the quality of the effort. Be be um, focus on the sticking points that you really want to hammer home, and knock those ones out. Knock out the one that's going to be the biggest linchpin for you, and really just in your free time, write a bunch of notes. Really plan this next version yourself. Really try to, with your time that you go out, tell yourself, okay, cool. I've been feeling anxious. So I'm going to go up and approach and not care whatsoever. I'm just going to try to be very calm, and relaxed. That's my only thing I'm working on is approaching and being super calm. So now you're, you're, you're isolating your sticking points. So be very, just with the time out, it, the only thing that matters is consistency. It's not time spent going out. It's consistency. You can go out for like five, 10 minutes a day. And because it's consistent, you're going to get a lot better than if you spent six hours in one day going out, you'd be a lot better off going out five, 10 minutes a day, like way better off. And everybody has five to 10 minutes. I love visualization, but it looks like I got to change some strategies. Yeah. Tips or mentality to enjoy approaching more. Um, look at the adventure of approaching. Look at the possibility of a connection with a random, just sexy ass girl. Look at it. Like this is basically what they do in movies. You're, you're basically, you're, you're, you're doing the stuff that most men are terrified to do, too terrified to do. And you're doing it sober. That's insane. That's absolutely fucking insane. Can you give any marriage advice? No. That's the one thing I'm going to be really bad at, man. And like, I'll say this. I'm, I'm Marriage advice. Actually, here, I, I can give you a couple because I was actually studying up on this a little bit today. Um, not my advice. It's, it's advice that I've taken from other people. Know that she's her own person, her own entity, and know that because she's her own person, her own entity, that you have no control over who she is and she's allowed to do whatever the hell she wants. Now, if she crosses a line with you that you think is just too much for you to handle, then, you know, go your own ways. But if it comes down to it, for the most part, you guys are your own separate entities. You guys are not meant to, to control and control each other, to, to box each other in, to, to be like, oh, you're this, you, you want to do this, this is who you are inherently. No, you can't anymore. I mean, unless it's something like, you know, you're, you're a sex actor or something like that. And you're sleeping with a bunch of girls. Then that might be something you might want to curtail. But for the most part, you, you got to understand that both of you guys are your own people and people are going to do what they want to do, regardless of if you tell them if they can or not. So love the person for who they are and 
for some of it, for love them for the parts that you're you that um that they that they can't change even if like momentarily like it, it's those parts of them are negative to you come to terms with that because you're never going to really truly find personality wise the perfect girl i mean you get pretty goddamn near close but there's always going to be a little like you know personality defects here and there and when when you're like when when somebody's just you want to learn more to love it and to come into acceptance of that kind of energy. That's, that's more of a proper way to do marriage. But my ultimate thing is like, I just, I just don't think, I think people change too much. Like if you're a person that changes a lot and you, you put a ring on somebody's finger and then you have to go through the whole divorce scenario, maybe five, 10 years down the road, because you guys became such different people with different outcomes of life and different wants and different uh, purposes. It's difficult. So I don't, I don't think, I think a ring really can, can uh, hurt can cause a lot more hurt than than it does help. I, I really have never understood the whole marriage or thing, but that's that's again me. Don't don't listen to me. The dating, the the marriage stuff is. I'm better at the uh, the making guys attractive part. That part I'm really good at. The dating, the marriage stuff. Give me five, ten more years, okay, and I'll figure it out then. Uh, what exactly do you disagree on with? Good looking. I, I disagree with almost everything he says. To be honest, I'm not even gonna say his name. I just I, I think he's a charlatan. I, I looked at his stuff. He's faking a lot of things. Is the 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 old infields he used to post were all fake, like excruciatingly fake. And I did a lot of and I tried a lot of stuff out because I was so autistic back in the day. So I'll say this just uh, for love of God. Usually I'm very open minded with a lot of other guys that aren't me. Um, he's I don't know if if you're gonna look listen to him about how to gain muscle, he's he's pretty good on that. He, he's a, he has a really good physique. Listen to him on that, but don't listen to him about stuff like we're talking about in here. Don't listen to all that stuff. He doesn't know what he's talking about. No offense. Maybe he does nowadays, but back in the day when I watched him, no, he didn't. So what exactly do you, um, give it so down, bro, brutal. How much more time do I got? Oh shit. I'm actually over the time. Okay. I'll do one more question actually here. Let me see if that one guy, if laughing Fox, the spiritual energy concept owns always talking about. Okay. So I might need a little bit more specific specificity on that one but I'll try my best. So the spiritual energy concept he's talking about. So, okay. Here, I'll, 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 I'll there, there's a lot of factors in exactly what you're asking here. So here, I'll, I'll draw it out like this. So the basic model that they're teaching now is that, is that you go through tiers and levels of ego death. And by going through the tiers and levels of ego death, you are you are evolving and becoming more of a well-rounded individual. So here, let's do it like this. Okay. Okay. So the way that I have always viewed it is that, well, it, it, this is kind of an understanding that I've come to through the idea of biology. So when you're going through evolution and you're coming from a place of absolute lack, so a lot of you guys, you guys probably can resonate with this because maybe you guys have come from a really low place. When you are lacking so utterly in love, it's almost like you're suffocating. It's almost like you're, you're drowning and you become desperate for love and attention for, for human connection. And so you're coming from such a low place. You're coming from a place of apathy, coming from a place of apathy. Well, actually here, let, let me put it this way. So th what I'm doing right here is, so the, the transformation thing that, uh, that Owen talks about is an oscillation. It's an oscillation. It's an oscillation between the me and the we. Now, apathy, apathy is off the, off the charts bad. It's at the bottom. It's like, I don't love me and I don't love anybody else. I'm like, I'm so much in pain. I want out. It's when you're more suicidal. Now, the next thing, it's basically like when you're on your couch and you don't want to do shit with your life. Now, what happens is maybe something happens and now you start becoming fearful. So you start going towards the me. So now you're more, your fear, your fear. You're like, shit, I got to get moving. I don't want to be a loser in my life or I, I don't want to die or I don't want this. I don't want that. Well, after a certain while, you, you, your drive and your, your, your reason for moving and taking action and chasing things is because you're afraid. But after a while, you get so angry at what's making you afraid. You're like, that, that person right there is what's making me afraid. Fuck them. And then we do. Actually, no, it's fear, fear from the we, your fear from the we. You're afraid of others. And that's what the first thing that moves you. 
that out of apathy. But then you're like, fuck them. I'm, a, I'm about me. I swing the pendulum to the me again, back to caring about yourself. So now you're like this. You're, you're going from fear to anger. Now you're driven not by fear to succeed. Now you're driven by anger. You're like pissed off. You're, you're, you're angry at them. Which you guys, you guys know a lot of YouTube channels that are like this, where their drive is anger. Anger is good in a certain place. Now, here's the thing. If I was trying to take a guy from apathy to anger, he doesn't have the drive or the leverage to get angry because he thinks he's worthless. He, he doesn't have that, that, that thing there. The, the first step he needs to take is the fear. Well, now after a while, being angry takes a lot of energy. It's very difficult to keep up because energy is a very, it's, it's, it's just like being depressed. It's, it's a very energy consuming emotion. So after a while, you're like, I'm so tired of being angry all the time. And this is the way that I must be trying to succeed. It's the only way I can succeed. But you know what? Maybe I just need a life of being relaxed and chilled. So now what do you do? You swing back to the we. But this version of the we is now a little bit more centered. It's a little bit less, it's a little bit less all like focusing on everybody else. It's a little bit more all-inclusive. So now you're looking for what is called, how to put it? It's um stability. You're looking for stability. You want, you want a house, you want a picket fence, you want kids, you want a wife. Well, what happens is you start chasing stability, stability, but then you find out the stability is not as stable as you thought. Your wife cheats on you. Your house goes, your house, you, you accrue a ton of debt and you lose your house. You try to date this girl and she ends up cheating on you. So what do you do? You're like, well, fuck that. Stability didn't work. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do shit for me. And then you swing back from the we from the caring for your tribe to caring for me. And I'll actually explain this really in depth too. After this, I'll explain why this is the case too. But basically it's an oscillation, the, the whole oscillation. So now you're, you're like, I wanna, I wanna win. I wanna conquer stuff. I wanna make a lot of money. I wanna get, I wanna fuck a lot of bad bitches. Like, cause I got cheated on. I lost some money. My, my house went up for debt. I wanna make so much for me that I never have to be afraid of losing things ever again. So you're, you're in it for me. Now what happens is, it's an oscillation. Every oscillation, it's a little bit more to the middle. It's a little bit more to the middle. It's a little bit more to the middle until it's eventually, supposedly the word is, um, what do they call it? They call it, um, there's a term for this, uh, enlightenment, I guess you could say. Enlightenment is this one right here. It's this center line. It's when you're an even, the proper ratio between the me, the caring about myself, and also caring about my friends, my family, everybody else around me. Now, my theory on this is, is that I think that as humans, we're, we're made to be in a tribe of 25 to 50. And I think about it like this, your tribe is very genetically close to you in their, in, in their, in their makeup. So if your tribe wins, you also win. And if your tribe's also killing it, your tribe has the most Buffalo, your, your tribe is, has, I don't know, has the best spot on the mountain. Like you're winning too, because your tribe's winning. Everybody's happy. Everybody's crazy. Everybody's like, you're feeling good emotions because your tribe's feeling good emotions. The women are all wanting to have baby stuff. So you start having babies. So your tribe's winning, you win. Now it's a constant like back and forth between these two things until you learn to both love yourself and have value for yourself and also have value for your tribe. And it's this oscillation back and forth, back and forth until you both love yourself, you both have value for yourself and then value for other people other than yourself. So it's an oscillation. And that's actually ultimately what enlightenment is. It's like, I value me, but also I value my tribe. I love my people. It's this back and forth until and it comes from a place of originally lacking abundance, lacking love, going through a lot of trauma, being shown that you can die, being shown like that, that you can lose everybody around you, that people don't, that love isn't inherently, it's basically lose the internal locus control, the, the belief that I like that you have an identity. So you need people to, to, to supplicate and give you feedback on this, on this identity. You're either a codependent or you're a narcissist because you lack the internal locus of control depending on how your family and your friends and your, your parents treated you when you're growing up. And we're in this big ass tribe now of 8 billion people. Now, guess what? <laughs> Look, laughing Fox, does this make sense though? Does this make sense at all? Or am I going too complicated? I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain like there's, there's so many different aspects to why spirituality matters and why it works. It is really complicated, but it matters. It, it does matter. Okay. Like we're, it does. Okay, good. All right, good. Sorry, man. I don't mean to like, I don't mean to like harp on this. It's something I see. I didn't believe in this whole spirituality thing originally either. I thought it was stupid. And I thought that people were trying to get one over on me. So it's not that it, it's, there is a reason that's that this stuff works. And I don't know if it's a self-perceived thing. Like I'm like, I'm forcing the facts into, to working this way so that I can 
understand, but it seems very straightforward to me and it seems to make sense. And, it, and the more that I kind of give into the spirituality stuff, the more that my life does get better. So from my person, from my personal perspective of my reality, from my subjective reality, it's really powerful. It's really helpful stuff. And I can only talk about like people who have, who've done boot camps, me, my friends, me, I, I don't know what your reality is like, but try it out, man. Like, I know it's like the, it seems like the BS, but it, I'll tell you this, understanding where you're at in this, the scale can really help you out in terms of getting better with women. Because as you go through the scale too, you become more confident, resolute, you become more secure in yourself. And you also give off a different vibe that people like, have you ever talked to somebody that, that, that you feel like the need to qualify and make them like you? And then have you also talked to somebody where you're looking down on them and you're like, I remember when I was like, where I was at, when I was, when, when, when this person was where he's at, and you're like, I remember when I was where he was at. And I remember how it felt and you feel bad for them. They start qualifying. They start trying too hard. And you're like, calm down, calm down, calm down. Like it, it's the same thing. It's um, as you keep going up and up and up, people will start naturally qualifying to you more. And you actually have more belief in yourself and people sense the self-belief and they stop. Like it's actually the reason why kids get bullied because they, they believe they're worthy of getting bullied on some level. They think that that's actually like, it sounds stupid, but it's, it's, it's nuts. All right. Anyways, now that I've gone off on a crazy ass tangent and Definitely ostracize anybody that's ever going to watch my channel new. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to get going because I'm already like an hour and 11 minutes off turning into Tangent King again. All right, guys. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. That being said, peace.